Hi guys, in today's video we'll be continuing our work on the Windows Forms application, but we'll be taking a deeper look at the button object. The button object essentially allows you to trigger some function in your program whenever the user clicks a button. We're able to enable buttons and disable buttons and show and hide them and things like that, and we'll go over that today. So let's jump into Visual Studio, take a look. So continuing on from yesterday's video, today we'll be looking at buttons. So we did a bunch of stuff yesterday with this label. I'm just going to get rid of all of that. And I'm going to leave our label on here because we might do something with it a bit later on. But we're going to drag a button onto our program. We'll resize it a bit. We can also go into our properties window down here and we'll change the text on there. So we'll change that to click me. So We've got our button, it says click me, maybe we'll just align it in the bottom corner and make it super big for no reason at all. Now, if we want to run some code when the click me button is clicked, we can double click it in our design window and actually it creates this function for us in our code behind called button1.click. And so whenever somebody clicks on the button when your app's running, this code in here will fire. So we can do some interesting things in here. We can start to assign different variables in our program if we want to, uh, or we can start looking at uh, updating some of the information on our button. So let's start with that. And we'll say, because we didn't rename our button, it's just called button one. And we will, we can look at some of these properties on here. So the first one is enabled. So whether a button is enabled or disabled dictates whether or not it can be clicked. So if we press start, so our button starts enabled uh, because this code hasn't fired yet. But if we click it, you'll see it becomes gray and we can no longer click it again. So that's what enabled does. Uh, it's four cases where you might have a button on screen that doesn't need to be available all the time. Um, maybe it, something else needs to happen first. Maybe the user has to type something into a box or something like that. And then as soon as they do, you would then set the enabled to true. And then that would ungray out this button. You might have seen people, you know, you may have even used this term yourself, but things being grayed out in the user interface is usually an indication that those things aren't available right now for, you know, one reason or another. So we'll close our program. So that's how you can enable and disable a button. We obviously want our, enable to, our button to be enabled, so we'll set that back to true. We can also look at visible. So we looked at this yesterday on the label stuff, but it works exactly the same in here. So on when the button's clicked, we'll just set that to visible false. And what you'll see is our, label, our button disappears. Again, we don't want that, so we'll set that back to true. We could also look at some styling. So we could say back color equals color dot, we'll make it pink. And we'll say maybe set the four color to uh, brown, pink and brown. And we'll press start. So we see our button starts off with a normal style because we haven't clicked it yet. But as soon as we click it, it changes to this funky pink and brown scheme going on here but let's just say we didn't want to just update random stuff inside of our button and we wanted to look at maybe updating a label we could just set the text value of that to something new Ooh. so we're just accessing the label, our welcome label, and we're just changing the text just like we did above. And actually now we can start to see how this button is affecting other parts of our user interface. Um, we could do something even more interesting and we could declare an int variable outside of our function. So we'll call this one int clicks equals zero. And then every time someone clicks the button, we could say clicks equals clicks plus one. And then finally, we could update the label and have it say clicks equals, and then we'll just add on our clicks at the end. 
Now if we run our program, you see here, the more times we click on here, the more times this, the, the higher the number in the label goes. So that's kind of a dumb example of something a little bit more complex, just to show you that you can, um, you can do quite a lot of powerful stuff with buttons. They're very good for triggering, you know, different actions and different changes to user interfaces in your program. And um, yeah, I, I would go away and create some buttons, maybe give them better names than what we did here, and uh, maybe start to use them to update other parts of your apps, such as your labels and maybe some text boxes like we'll look at soon. Maybe look at having some buttons enable or disable or show or hide other buttons when you click on them and just have a mess around really and just try and get used to how the buttons work. Hi, I hope you found that video useful. If you have any comments or feedback, then please leave me a comment below. I'm currently doing new videos every single day. So if you'd like to be notified about those, then hit that subscribe button and I will see you in the next one.